What's going on, everyone? So there is so much mystery surrounding Fromville, right? What is it exactly? Is it an alternate dimension? Is it some type of altered reality? Is it something where it's in somebody's mind and, you know, Victor's or the boy in white and it's just his imagination or something? Is it some supernatural element to it? Is it a form of purgatory or hell even? And that's something that I've talked about and did a whole theory video in on it because you really think and you look at kind of the, the elements of Fromville and you got these monsters that just rip people to shreds and you know it's just this never-ending cycle of just everyone's nightmares right I mean you see it from you know worms crawling in Boyd's skin to uh the cicadas to you know the the big spiders and spider webs and then the dungeon right and it's almost like these like different levels these different elements of like a purgatory almost right think of like dante's inferno and the and the different levels of hell and it's like even boy that was did he travel to a different level right he got kind of thrown and he doesn't know how far he got thrown uh tabitha right it appears that tabitha is in the real world but is she really is it possible that she isn't and she's in another level of Fromville? But that's also what makes this show so great. That's what makes this show so much fun and so incredible uh, to just watch because there's just so many different possibilities, so many different elements. But regardless of whatever it is, right, there is clearly this great evil that dwells in Fromville that just constantly is targeting and, and just messing with the people that live in this town, right? They have an opportunity, the monsters have an opportunity to kill Boyd and decide not to. Got him dead to rights. Could just completely just eliminate him and be done. But they chose not to. Why? Because they want to break him. They want to break him mentally. And that's what this place does. You know, it feeds on your hopes. It feeds on your fears. It feeds on just all the things that are emotions that you would deal with. But there's one good element to Fromville, and that is the boy in white. Now, look, there is a ton of mystery into the boy in white, and we still don't fully know, is he really good, or is it all just kind of a manipulation tactic? Is there more to it? Is this is the boy in white another element of this place that is to, to have you perceive that there is this good only to kind of put you in different positions, right? Like, for example, you see the boy in white constantly helping, but, like, with Boyd. He helps Boyd get out of being, you know, eaten, but ends up putting him in a dungeon that he may or may not get out of. Now, you could argue that's not really the boy in white's fault because, you know, the, the trees kind of take you wherever, right? It's never the same every time. You don't really know where you're going to end up, right? But it does appear that the boy in white is helpful to an extent. And it does appear that the boy in white does have a connection and a tie to Victor and Ethan. And even Victor talks about how they were chosen, right? Well, what if, again, this is just a theory, what if the boy in white is God? What if the boy in white is this entity that is there to kind of oversee, right? Like, you even see Tabitha in the latest season of season three. And there's a lot of elements about this show that are biblical in a sense. Now, I don't necessarily think it would be, you know, the biblical tradition of God, but I do think you could get something. Like, have you ever seen Supernatural, right? Have you ever seen Supernatural with, like, Chuck, right? Like, that is something that I could see maybe taking place. Right? And even Tabitha said some interesting things uh, with the priest uh, about God. And, you know, you, you have this place of just pure evil. And the only thing that is good is this, what is masquerading around as a boy who is really helping those that are innocent. I mean, you know, Sarah, you could argue, um, obviously she wasn't innocent when she was helped, but how much of it was helping her or helping boy? Right. And, you clearly see these connections, but he, he does he's not there all the time. But he's constantly overseeing and watching, right? Because he knew where to send Tabitha and he helps Tabitha and he tells Tabitha, like, this is the only way. Right? Like, and and you know, the saying, like, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Right? Like, 
you're in this place of hell, and what if the boy in white is this version of God? You know, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be God. Like, what if the boy in white is this this angel? Right? You're in a place of demons. Like, what if the boy in white is the angel that is there to, to show you mercy and try to help you out, try to get you out of this? Or maybe it's like their version of a deity. Right? Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be biblical sense. Right? This is very, like, this show, and I really want to kind of do a deep dive into this, um, because there are a lot of elements of, like, Scottish folklore. Right? And there's, like, uh, there's a lot of like just like you read some of this Scottish folklore and then tie that to this show and it's like identical. Um, but we'll save that for another video another day. But when you look at the boy in white and you look at kind of like the the elements that are here and and kind of this this evil that lurks and there is and appears to be this almost overseer, right? Because one, you have whoever that was on the phone, right? In season one, or not the phone, the uh, CB radio, right? There was that, that voice over the CB radio that saw and knew everything, right? Talks about, tells Jim about Tabitha in, in the room. And, you know, hey, Jim's about to get another call at some point in uh, season three. Is that that voice again? Or is it Tabitha or something else, right? So there seems to be even... When the when Boyd um, is dealing with the monsters, right? The monsters tell him that, oh, you don't think this place can break you. There are several moments throughout each season in which it's clear that this place is listening, right? That there is something, this this grandiose being or evil or whatever it is that is overseeing and watching everything that happens in this place, that knows every detail about this place, that knows conversations that you're having in private, right? Everything. So who's to say that the boy in white isn't the counter to that? Who's to say that the boy in white isn't, again, like a version of God in this realm that is there to kind of help? Also, the boy in white communicates outside of like with Tabitha where he pushes her, like, but you look at with Sarah, kind of talk to her in her mind. Now you could argue that, you know, that's just how Sarah was communicating with these, you know, these spirits and stuff that were operating in the Fromville. But, you know, if this is a form of purgatory and this is this place of, of you know, just hell, this just monsters and chaos, it would make sense that, you know, you'd have this deity, this God that could, you know, operate in a way. And what's, you know, because you, you might ask, like, why a child? Well, that would kind of make sense in this realm. Like, what's more innocent than a child? Right? And it's like a child in this place, right? kind of stands out, really kind of makes you notice, right? Like, it's just, it, it's one of those things where, you know, if it was some big guy, right? Like, it, it's it's scarier, right? It, it's It's something that's more standoffish. Right, you see a child, you're a little more accepting, you're a little more willing to listen. Like, is this kid really gonna hurt me? Right? But if it's some like grown man, right? And also, you know, God, it would make sense. God would take on many forms. Again, you kind of go back to the supernatural, right? And you know, I mean, look, the show's been off the air long enough and been around, you know, long enough to where if you haven't seen at least the the fifth season, <laughs> which was like ten years ago now. Um, but if you haven't, spoiler, like, who is God in that show? It's Chuck, who is the most, like, non-threatening, you never guess type of person. Like, he's just this weird, bumbling nerd. It's just, it would make sense that you'd have this kind of deity that is child-esque, that is welcoming, that is warm, that is not going to scare you off if you saw him. That really stand again really stands out. It's like why? Like, that, that's a is that a child? Right? Like you're not gonna. You you're, it makes you notice. Where if it's just some random guy, you might just take off running because you might think it's a monster. But if it's a kid, you're like, oh, like wait a minute, right? It's just it's something that I think makes sense in that regard. 
But again, it's just a fun theory, a fun idea that, you know, if you if you have this form of hell, and again, I'm not saying it doesn't even necessarily have to be hell. It could be another dimension. It could be this, this whatever, this imagination, right? And you now you have good and evil. Right? Clearly, this is the representation of good, or it appears to be that way. Again, we don't know all the details, but all we've seen from the boy in white clearly is good. Right, we haven't seen them lead anyone to their death or anything like that. Like even Tabitha, it was kind of questionable why he led her to like some random ice cream shop, but he took her he took her down the path that ultimately led her to the church, that led her to Victor, uh, you know, the the lunchbox that led to the um that led to her finding the father. And she goes to a church after he leads her. Again, I mean, it's just, he kind of guided her to a church, essentially, right? Like, so, you know, again, it could just be nothing. could be something. But that's why it's a theory. That's why it's fun to kind of dive in and explore these different things. But, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Uh, do you think, like, yeah, hey, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, maybe this is God or a version of God or an angel or some type of good deity? Um, do you think, like, nah, it's probably, it's got to be a spirit. Maybe it was one of the first spirits, whatever that was there. I mean, again, there's a million ways they go about it. But however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said. If you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Now subscribe channel. What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.